Welcome, everybody, uh, to the latest episode of the Gallery Walk Talk series. We are on episode 16, and this series uh, features Miss Mary Zunick, who is the Hot Springs Cultural Affairs Manager at the Cultural Alliance. This series um, gives a monthly focus and, and spotlight on a local artist um, while celebrating the uh, Hot Springs Tradition Gallery Walk, which is the first Friday of every month. And this month, um, we have a very, very special guest. All of our guests have been special, and um, you can go back and check out all 15 previous episodes, uh, including last month, which, which featured Diana Garrison. Uh, you can see those on the library's Facebook and YouTube. But this is one of the most impressive guests you've had so far, Mary. Uh, who, who are we going to be hearing from tonight? We are going to have the opportunity to visit with Long Law Shu. Um, yes, absolutely. Such an honor to have him on this evening. And this is one of those gallery walks when the first Wednesday of the month is after the first Friday of the month, which is when gallery walk takes place. So it gives us a little bit more time to, you know, not talk quite so much about the nuts and bolts of exactly what will be happening in the galleries for gallery walk, but spend a little bit more time with one artist and get to know a little bit about them. And Long Law is certainly one that um, that we we could spend all evening with, but we'll try to only cover some highlights. <laughs> but I just encourage everybody, if you have the opportunity to, um, to visit with him or go to a studio and see his work, to jump at it. And anytime you can see um, his exhibit that we'll be talking about a little bit more. And you know, we all drive by some of his work every single day in Hot Springs. He has um, several pieces of art that's public art um, that our city or other businesses have purchased um, so that we can all enjoy it. We don't have to own it in our own home. That's the beauty of public art is that we all get to enjoy it. So the residents and the visitors when they come into town as well. Um, so yes, but Gallery Walk, since we since that is the, the title of it, we'll, um, we have a big anniversary for Gallery Walk in August. We will celebrate 33 years of Gallery Walk which takes place the first Friday of every single month. Um, the galleries stay open late. And um, so I just encourage everybody to put August 5th on their calendar, put a star and a big circle around it, that that is the 33rd anniversary of Gallery Walk. And you don't want to miss it. Um, you know, there's one gallery that's changed names, but it's been open since the beginning. Um, Justice Gallery has been open for 18 years, and I know some are um, legacy galleries been around for a long time, Gallery Central. So certainly um, we're going to have some uh, champagne um, to toast the 33rd Gallery Walk that night. So, um, but now, and I just want to, before we get started, thank you so much, Paul. You're, you're always kind to have us on here. So thank you. Absolutely. And just a couple uh, quick comments. Um, if anyone wants to learn more about the galleries in any detail, you had a wonderful program last month when, when uh, Diana Garrison was the guest and you went into an overview of each of the galleries, kind of a, a virtual tour downtown. So check out that uh, program from last month. And if anybody watching live has any questions, comments, stories you want to share uh, for Mary or our wonderful guests we're about to meet here in a moment, uh, please don't hesitate to share those. But uh, I'm turning it over to you and uh, I oh, can't wait to listen to your presentation and conversation. Great. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, before we bring Long Wa on, though, I'm just going to um, to tell you a little bit about him. Um, his interest, uh, Long Wa's interest in art began as a child when his older brother, Bing Wa, would take him to the park to paint landscapes. Um, as his talents blossomed, um, the national, the Chinese National Arts and Crafts Company created after the reopening of trade relations between the U.S. and China, selected him as part of an elite group to learn more traditional Chinese art at Lo Kui in 1971. And I should have mentioned this before I launched into um, the bio, but Long Wa, you might tell from the name, he's not from Hot Springs originally. He um, relocated here from China. And so his background and extensive training is kind of what we'll be covering um, this evening, as well as the artwork that he has created while he's lived here in, in Arkansas. 
Um, so Lo Kui um, is where he went to, to learn more traditional Chinese art. Um, this art facility, which encompasses all of the Shanghai province, was dedicated to furthering the art education of gifted students from all over China to create a new generation of professional artists following the end of the cultural, cultural revolution. Longhua graduated from East Chinese University of Technology with a degree in fine arts and went to teach at Shanghai University of Technology until 1989. Um, he began displaying his art nationally in 1972 with several exhibitions all over the country, including the Shanghai Art Museum. He also erected several monumental sculptures in Shanghai. Many of his works were published in nationally distributed magazines in China and presented as national gifts to foreign dignitaries. One of his sculptures was selected to be in the complete works of world master sculpture at the, the end of the 19th century to present. In 1989, he was invited to immigrate to the U.S. with the title of Outstanding Artist under the Extraordinary Ability Program. He felt that in America there would be more access from all over the world. So in 1992, uh, or so he immigrated here and then we're going to hear a little bit more about what he's done since he's been here when he joins us. So please, please, if you'll join me in welcoming Long Wash You. Hey. And we're going to cover some of your other accomplishments. Lots of people in Arkansas, especially here in Hot Springs, know that you're also an Arkansas living treasure. And we'll talk a little bit about more about that designation. Um, so welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thanks to have opportunity to talk with you. Um, so I kind of mentioned a little bit about um, your training in China, but can you take us back to when you were a little boy and tell us about your first kind of introduction to art? How, who did you learn art from besides your brother as mentioned, but is there anyone else? Well, you know, my mom had five kids. I mean, she also had her own work. So it's difficult to take care of the kids and the work. So really my parents let us do anything we want. Like I don't remember my, my brother take us go to park and she only make sure say, drink enough water, get the food. Anything else we do, what just my brother, we always go to paintings, drawings, you know. Funny things is sometimes we even drawing all over the tables, the wall and the floor. And sometimes getting my, my dad's upset. My mom said, what? You know what? Every year we had to repaint the wall anyway. Don't worry about that. So this is why I developed our skill to do express what we think, what we like to do, you know? Excellent. Now, how, where are you in the birth order? Are you the oldest or the youngest or? No, I'm the middle one. I'm the forgiven child, you know, <laughs> the middle one. <laughs> And now, are any of your other siblings um, artists also? Yes, um, we have four brothers, one sister. So our brother is a professional artist. My oldest brother is like an art editor in the newspaper. And my second brother is professor in the University of Shanghai. And I was teaching in Shanghai also. Then my youngest brother is um, it's freelance artist. So he, he, he did a lot of work around the world too, you know. He had the show in the Nelson Museum. Also, of course, you see the his show in the Chicago Institute several years ago. Right. Excellent. So, so quite a family legacy. Thanks. Or kind of a yeah. dynasty, even. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, China have some family have like three brothers, professional artists. There was not much, like four brothers all did that, you know. So how old were you when you were selected to go for this special training and what what led up to you being selected for that? You know, um, during the 1971, American and the United States kind of opened the door for, for each other. So they need to exchange something, you know, not the political things because they're totally different, you know what I mean? So the change was art. So then the government fill out we don't have enough artists because the university has been closed for 10 years during the Cultural Revolution. So we are the first generation to pick up the training with, with art. So 
this like you mentioned, like we we've been choose fifty students from the, the Shanghai to to study with a like a carving with a oil painting with a watercolor and Chinese paintings like that. So I'm the one. It's like it's, it's wood carvings. So we've been training very professionally, like uh, the professor and the must artist two on one to training you because. The, the government, the local government realized we have some kind of issue is the children grew up or graduate from the college. Sometimes they talk real well, they can do, it's okay, you know, but it's not really good both sides. This is why they add a mass artist to train you one on one, which the first generation you can do it. Also, you can talk and not only just you do one side, you know. Wow. So each student that was selected had two two instructors working with them. Yeah, but it's not exactly two on one. It's like two on one, but we have very small class. Right. The sculpture people, you know, it's, it's only feel, then this is why you feel like a two on one all the time, but it's not exactly. We have like a 10, 15 does carving, and some people does the oil painting, some people does the ink. Like my wife was, it's a Chinese traditional craft, you know. And so how many years did you train like that? We trained in three years, just nothing else. Very, very particular, just training the scale about what to do. And the study with, for instance, like I was studying work carvings, they study with a tools. So you got a piece of metal, you make your own knife. Then you to know how to make a knife then you cover on the wood so you know what knife we really need. So this is a very, very detailed, very strong foundation training. Because in Chinese culture, we say if you want to build up high enough the building, you have to have very good wide foundations. This is why they train you what to do. Study with the tools, which is pretty wise because make it so much benefit for me. I'm coming to the United States. And I can do almost everything I needed to do. It's not like, oh, I only do pottery, oh, I only do paintings. So to according my trying to survive skill to almost do everything. You know, people need the paintings with the carving, the pottery, you know. Even the sculpture we'll talk about wood carving, stone carving, and then it's like a fiber glass casting. Without this skill I was studying in China, I don't think I can survive, you know. So now how you were there for three years. So what age was that when you were in the, the school? It's um, 17 to 20. Okay. So, so after this, you I, actually it's not, not a college course. It's a art company with a college combined to make this. So really after cultural revolution was over, then I had to go to school again to study again. But tell the truth, when we're in the class, the professor don't want to teach us anymore. He said, you know, just do anything you want to do. We cannot teach you anymore. Oh, wow. Because so we've been very solid to training for several years. I mean, nobody does that, you know. Now, um, so when you went to university then, did you study art in university as well? Yes, but most time I spent in the library. I mean, almost every day we in the library because I feel I need a lot of things from the, what people do in the past. You know what I mean? Like I studied like Michelangelo, studied Lafayette, I studied all Chinese traditional carving stuff. I want to know where the roots come from. So because for the artist, the scales are one thing. The hand, you can do it. But the eye levels are other things. You have to be combined together to make you better. Otherwise, you can do anything. You can copy anybody, but you don't create it yourself. Right. Now, did you did you ever consider another profession? No. I mean, I guess the only things that we grew up, I mean, lots of people kind of say, hey, you know, I can do, almost do everything. I said, no, if you, like me, been training since like a, I was my brother, like five, six years old, to do now 68 years old, 
more than 60 years, anybody can do it like I do, if we do one thing about art, you know. Very, very true. Um, would you do anything different if you had to go back and start over again in your training? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think my training is very solid, which is very good. I mean, I was teaching in the University of Shanghai, also I teach in Henderson for a while, and I feel they, they need more time to do the scale. And because in the school, only four years, they had to run about lots of different things, you know, besides the art. So they don't have enough time to really to build up their own scale. This is why so many children grew up, they failed it. And I was teaching the Henderson, I trying to teach my students to say, look, I ask you to win drawing or 10 drawings. You should be doing more than I ask you. But it's unfortunate they don't because they think that the art is kind of easy going or they have kids already, you know, they have family to feed. So they don't do much things. So I say, I'm just so feel sorry for these people because they graduate, finished it, they're gone. They got a piece of paper for nothing because they cannot survive it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, was so do, is there any advice you would give students who are growing up or ha are aspiring to be an artist when they grow up? Oh, yeah. I was always tell my students, oh, someone want to be artist. I tell them, say, first things you wake up, what are you thinking? It's a job you will be. Which, if you grow up, you wake up, you after breakfast, you you start want to work on the sculpture or drawings or carving or paintings. You don't feel tired. You feel like a joy. You feel like you you know you enjoyed it. It's not a job. This is a job you can do. It. Otherwise, just forget about that. Because not much reward for you besides you make things you enjoy yourself. Because you know. Like I am here for more than 32 years without my wife, my kids, you know, supporting me and have restaurant to make money. I cannot make a living on it because the time you're putting on it, don't make any money. Even, even lower than minimum wage, you have to be enjoyed to do it. Otherwise, just forget about it, you know? Now, when you... Um... What led you to decide to leave China to come to the U.S. after you had done all of your training there? What led you to come here? Well, in the 1986-87, I have a exchange professor from the Rochester, New York. I, I'm the host because in my art department, only a few people can speak English understand English to communicate with a professor from the Rochester, you know. I'm not very good. I mean, I can understand more than I can talk. So better than the old professor. Anyway, they let me handle this. Okay. So I host this chairman artist from the Rochester for three months. We teaching, we, we painting, we, we drawing. And after this, we have traveled to, to the, the, the place to see the art also, you know. He, he loved my work. He said, hey, Long Hua, you want to be good. You have to be leave the country to go to the West to see what we do. Because I am basically it's a Western art. You know, I do sculpture, do paintings. It's not Chinese art. So I said, well, I don't think I have a chance right now. Because in China, we always give the chance for the older professor. I'm the youngest one, you know. So he know, she said, you know what, I, I, I'll give you another chance. I asked my school, gave one more, you know, for, for like one more tickets for you to come in specially. I said, okay, you can try, <laughs> you know, but he did it. So that's why I have a chance to come to the United States for three months in their school to, to exchange teacher, you know. And the after I come here, really, it's not not the things like you think about in the movies, in, in you know, the life's totally different than you think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm young, I'm naive, I mean, I think I can do it, you know? I think, well, people can do it here, I can do it, <laughs> you know? Well, so that, that got you to Rochester. How did you find your way to Hot Springs, Arkansas? Well, Rochester only for three months. 
Okay, after three months, you, you got to go back to the school. But I wrote a letter to the school, say I need an exchange, extension one year because I feel I learn a lot of things from here because the language, the culture, and a different kind of art form. The school said, yeah, if you don't, you have to pay, you pay yourself. We, we don't give you any salary anymore, you know? So I had one more year extension, so I don't, I can't handle the Rochester cold anyway, you know? It's the Rochester, it's a very cold. You cannot even, without the vehicle, you can go nowhere, it's always ice. So the hot spring, they have a, like art movement in the 1989. So like Benini and John Fu, I guess they, they studied with some national park stuff like that. So I found out this is a good place to show my work. So that here Chambers actually is the first guy to show my work. Later on, um, the contemporary, you know, Deborah Phillips, they, 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 they show my work. We, we make enough money beginning with it to just sell the work, you know. And, uh, then the local senator, I forgot his name, I should be remember his name. He's very nice. He said, Long Kwai, you have good degree, you have good art. Why are you stay here? I said, I cannot stay here by myself. He said, We help you. So they put in all of my things, my resume, my publication, my artwork, the central immigration office. Like a few months later, I got my outstanding art. You know, what? so I don't have to be. I don't have to be have job. I don't have to be have somebody sponsor. So I got in my green car right away. Oh, that's wonderful. I know. And yes. Tom, something I get the sentence Tom. He's a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. And and so I'm gonna pull up our slideshow now and we'll see some pictures of young Long Wa. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's there's well, there we are now. So, Paul, or can can you see the images of of the view with the sculptures there? Yeah, I do. This is uh, uh, the first commission I did for the city of Hot Springs, and uh, we just have my daughter Annie, which thirty years ago this piece, and uh, the flood destroyed the downtown, the fountains. So. The people want to have a commission to do the sculptures. And I heard this story. I just designed it. And I sent the, I make a phone call to the Benin's wife. I said, I, I want to submit my proposal. She said, well, it's almost too late. We only have one week left. And uh, he said, you are the painter. And I said, no, I'm training as a professional artist for sculptures. He said, OK, just do something. So I quickly, this proposal I did it in a week, then I present to the the, the, the cities. And other pictures, I was working on these big sculptures. And we have very small studios, very narrow friends. My, they're hoping we're building a tall enough studio to work on the sculptures. And now, how tall is the sculpture? The sculpture, this lady self is 12 foot tall, but then this Deer and another deer children together. So that's 21 feet by 12 foot. And uh, I win this competition, and uh, most of friends of mine just tell me, say, forget about that because the commission, the budget is very low. It's only $20. And the material costs $20. This means we had to work in for one year for free. Uh, wow. All the now, people friends my know me, they said, Long Hua, forget, you, you don't need to do it because you don't make anything. You have no money, you know. I said, I'll win a competition. My wife said, we we just do something else to make a living. We just support you to finish it. So I'm glad I finished it. When the sculpture finished and uh, the Bill Clinton, the president run a letter and we have very success opening for like a, Miss Arkansas and performing the song or have the army, you know. I mean, it's very, very nice opening. Uh, it's the best opening for so far, you know. Wonderful. Now, what year did the, did this, was this erected? The sculpture is unveiling in the 1992. 
92. Okay. And, um, and you can see it here. Now this sculpture, Mother Nature is, um, right in the center of Central Avenue, um, in front of the Arlington Hotel and across from the Caddy Corner from the National Park. And a um, very special uh, designation too, it's also listed on the Smithsonian Registry of uh, Sculpture. So if you look Google Mother Nature, Smithsonian and Hot Springs, you'll, you'll see it there listed in the registry. This is when it was restored. Now, what material is the sculpture made from? And because the we cannot make stone, it does it will take a long, long time. And also, it's very heavy. Underneath, it's like a spring. We cannot do it. So we use a material called a fabric. And I was running okay. things in the college to use, you know, resin and the fabric as put together to make look like a marble, like a stone now. So when I present to the city and with a commission, they say we never heard that. You will need the proof. So we did a writing to, you know, around the country to figure out who did that. And we sent a letter all over the country. Then only one thing the Navy sent us back to say we have a ship building by Fabregas over 50 years, still working. This is why the commission in the downtown history, not history, but downtown business district, they say, okay, now we prove this material. Otherwise, they even don't let me do it. They said, what talk about fabulous, you know? I trying to talk with their interest. I said, look, the automobile, the the you know, the car building by fiberglass, they should be very, yeah. very heavy, very good, you know. But well, you there's know, fiberglass, a, there's fiberglass out floating all over Lake Hamilton. <laughs> Yeah, people don't understand it. They, they don't put picture together with it right. and the fiber guys, you know. And now this photo was taken about 2014, I think, because it was restored then, wasn't it? Had um, So from periodically, the fiberglass needs to be restored, doesn't it? Yeah, because the the sand damage with the surface, we put in the gel coat in the surface, it's kind of deteriorated. And also we have some problem with the kids i mean they sit on the deer home they're broken the deer too oh, so yeah. i was guaranteed i said will be 25 years to 30 years the lifespan because i cannot guarantee any longer because you know we don't know what in that right. so now it's over 30 years now and i encourage this you and working with the city to see if possible if we want to keep this sculpture forever we need a 3D scan the Oscar National Park, you know, now the college to help us 3D scan it then to casting bronze. I know why this piece, I cannot guarantee anymore. They could be down, broken anytime because we have so much people trying to just play with it, you know. Also yeah. the ice in the winter, it's also pretty hard for the sculpture. So now this is the only sculpture of the fiberglass, but there are several other sculptures around town um, that you created as well. Can, uh, this one is at CHI. Yes, Can you this, talk a little bit about yeah. this one? This the one uh, um, Mr. Farley was um, in the CEO in the St. John's Hospital. He he um, commissioned me to do this piece. He said, Long Hua, this, we have a new cancer center building up, we need something beside the, the buildings. And I look into the blueprints before they even building on it. I see that way, three way you can drive in. So I designed three angels on each driveway to, to greeting the people coming. And I have so much common on this piece. This is a bronze piece. I mean, this can be stayed forever anyway. We have the sculpture in the history for over a thousand years still existing on it. I have so much common on it, including friends my or somebody, strange people, they talk to me, say, hey, Long why you gave me so much help? I said, I don't know what I mean, I'll help you. He said, my, my husband got a cancer, they got a cancer center. I mean, they get treatment, they just scared that every time drawing into it, they see the angel. And John get out, they see the angel, they feel something help them spiritually, besides just medicine and the doctors. What a wonderful gift to, to give to everybody who comes there to give them hope, Wang Wah. That's amazing. That's something that 
that most people in their lifetime don't have the opportunity to create something like that that will go on virtually forever with it being bronze. That's yeah. that's wonderful. Thanks. Uh, Besides that, I want to talk a little bit about the art. Besides the art, scale and the design is. Yes. And uh, I always come to here beginning with I don't speak it very well, you know what I mean? So friends of mine take me to go to church. I've been going to church almost solid 10 years. Go to study Bible beginning to finish. I read the Bible several times and I understood each image is a help. Like I putting a flower on it, putting the water on it, putting water lily on it, and then put the butter flower in my work. This all is a key language for religious for help. If they are religious people, they look at it, they know what the meaning is. So I think this is why I encourage my students not only just think about scale, think about culture, think about the philosophy, think about the people believe. This will be helping a lot. Very nice. Well, it's quite a transition here, but um, this uh, piece is in a private collection here in Arkansas. And can you tell us a little bit about this sculpture? Yeah, this guy, <clears throat> he owned like a thousand acres and he raised the, the cow. And I look at the cow, I have no home. I said, man, how to do the cow without a home? He said, this is a special brand for the meat. So he wanted to have fountain in his studio or in the, his courtyard. So look at that the cow carefully to see that the ears stick out I, to, to represent the home, you know what I mean? And I did a relief by leaf sculpture underneath, have four different by leaf sculpture, have different kind of cow, have some long horn, have some regular cow, you know, have some mothers and children. This piece is a pretty good challenge because beginning with he only wanted to do a gate. And uh, I said, I don't, I don't do any gate. I can design gate for you. I can make you know image on the gate for you. And I just ask him, he said, how much you spend on this re renovating for the building? He said, well, man, over a million dollars. And I said, what the budget for the gate? He said, three thousand dollars. I said, any art? He said, not really. I, I just make a joke on him. I said, think about that. You have a you know very expensive suit. Then you only want to spend five dollars for your towel. I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> so he laughed on it too. You know, he said, "Okay, tell me what you want to do." And he invited me to his studio, uh, the place. I mean, I look around. I have several suggestions, and he said, "Just, just give me some things." So I designed it. I sketch on it. Give him look at it. He just pick up everything I designed. It. I have good time. Good luck with this guy. He's a very, very nice guy. Wonderful. That's that's so neat to be able to bring somebody over to see see the bigger picture. Because, yeah. you know, this sculpture will be there long after ever, all those furnishings in that house are gone. Yes. Or when it needs to be remodeled or there's new wiring or new electricity, this will live on much, much longer. Okay, now these are some of your smaller sculptures. Yeah, uh, you know, big commission you love to do, but have limit because people will be requests. You have to be, you know, limited on the what surrounding is. Like a, I design everything. Yes, I look at the surrounding first. For for instance, like Mother Nature, I did Mother Nature because we are natural state, we are hot springs. You know, that's why I designed a water running with a mother and kids and the deer and the rabbit, you know, all kind of things. And uh, I make a cow because the guy read the cow, you know what I mean? But for something, I spend my time and I go to the rock shop or go to the, you know, mine to pick up some stone I like it. This couple of pieces is all Arkansas marble and Arkansas limestone. So... You see these two pieces. One piece is like a piece of block. People use this for, for building the house on the wall. And this another piece in the left is a piece just something broken down when people mine. 
And I didn't do much because I pick up the stone, I already see the image in the stone before I pick up, before I do it. And this is a couple of nice favorite pieces. You pick the right thing, so this looks, looks great. And as a result of your um, sculptural work, your smaller sculptural work, you were designated by the Arkansas, um, by the Arkansas Department of Heritage as the 2019 Arkansas Living Treasure. Um, and you joined some other um, Ar Ar uh, Hot Springs um, folks with, with receiving that designation with um, Jim Larkin and um, Dallas Bump and Lori Popow, and now most recently, um, Kimbo Dryden. So we're very fortunate to have you as well as some other um, living treasures that you know you bump into at arts events or gallery walk and to have um, you all living and working here and creating beautiful art we artwork here in Hot Springs is just um, such such an honor for us. I don't know if there's any other concentration like that around the state. Yeah, we, we're very fortunate. We have lots of artists living here. There's lots of traditional art, you know. And thanks so much for joining. Pick up me for the living treasure for work carvings. I mean, he talked about living treasure. I said, I am not for sure. He said, yeah, you do work coming, isn't it? I said, yeah. This, I was training very heavily in the 1970s, 71, 72, 73, like that. So, most of the piece you see on the floor, on the table, I did it like in the 1980s. It's almost, you talk about, what, 40 years ago, you know? <laughs> well, in living treasures, um, it's not just, you can't be a painter or just, um, you, it has to be a traditional craft. And yes. making sure that is that traditional craft is shared with others. And so... Um, really, a uh, living treasure means that you share your craft, that you uh, there's education involved, as well as the skill of the artist. And so here you are with Stacy Hurst, who is um, head of the Arkansas um, Department of Heritage and Tourism, and um, Patrick Ralston from the Arkansas Arts Council, the director of the um, Arts Council there. So um, but that was a, a great event. A huge crowd came out to um, celebrate with you. Yes, yes, I appreciate that. The people in the hospital is a big support. Okay, now let's go on and hear about your next your next endeavor. And this kind of takes us back and we start from kind of from scratch almost. Um, can you tell us a little bit about The Visitor? Yeah, uh, you know, 1918, my wife and me, we, we, we think about this. We say, wow, we've been here almost 30 years now. We need to try to create something beside the mother nature for the historical downtown hot springs. So beginning with it, we work on a, we think about it, like DeSoto was trying to come here. The first white guy want to come here to do with the water things, you know, they look for water things, but we designed it and the people like it. And we got the first, Ten thousand grand, uh, ten thousand dollars from the rubber company. She she's so um, generous that she loved it. Then later on, uh, Darcy Moore and uh, Randy Foley and uh, Don Gooch all joined to 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 campaign to raise the money for that. Then you know the time passed and the people kind of don't like it. It's little in the histories. Then we changed to just white person, anybody else, it's just a visitor here. Then time passed, we don't feel looking right. Then we change to Indian people. Just 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 time by because this thing's 2018, now 2022, you know, we, we spent so much time for this project. Finally we finished now. So this the design, the sketch design in the, the far left is the the final design for they will be put on the downtown hot springs with the waters, with the horse, with Indians. This is the process, like you see the sculpture with a sketch first, then watering, then putting styrofoam, the foam in spread foam over there to make it lighter. You know, this is the process I did that. Then this is the finished 
clay work. It's a four foot tall with a with an Indian woman in the horse. This oh, right now is already going to 3D process. We the National Park National Park College come here to help me to 3D scan it. Then we sent to the founder, we sent to different founder to to testing. You see, this is the pictures of about the scanning process. We, we sent to different founders that can use just the software to develop the sculptures. It's a very, very advanced program in the hot springs. I, I, I love yeah. the um, contrast with you, your training being so um, traditional Chinese culture and learning the, the traditional um, in the traditional way but then using technology now. Um, now, what exactly happens again when, when they did the 3D scanning? What will happen with that now? You see the 3D scanning, basically like a thousand stone picture and different angles. They, they take pictures, then you see the difference, the depths in the computer, in the file that you send to the founder. They have a software, same thing. They use 3D printer or 3D, like a CAC machine to cut a phone to make a, any size you want. You can make it like a two foot, make a 10 foot, or make it like a even one foot. So it's a very amazing process. I mean, I finished the two foot one and now I'm working the four foot one and they work right now in the cast. Then I, if the results is good, because I always send to two different founders to see the results. If the results is good and the price is right, we choose one to develop the 12 foot. We hopefully can be finished in the of this year, then hopefully next springtime we can install it, you know. Wonderful. Now, what a treasure that will be. And it will be located in downtown Hot Springs. Yes, it will be in the downtown Hot Springs. That's we have one really it's a casting bronze that will be stay forever, you know. <laughs> Long after we are gone and our children and our children's children are gone, um, people will still um, be appreciating this. And I love the name The Visitor because so many people dating back to even the Native Americans, like the Native American that you depict in this sculpture, came here first as a visitor, um, a visitor to the Valley of the Vapors. And so what an appropriate um, name and um, image to be preserved for, you know, maybe not eternity, but for a very, very long time. And uh, by the way, I want to use this opportunity to thanks for the people support the sculptures, special people spend the time and, uh, you know, the monies and make these things happen. But they, the name, they will be in the base that people to remember over a hundred years to come. It is going to be, now how tall will this be again? This will be 12 foot tall. And in the in the tip of the horse, the, the ear, and uh, 12 foot wide and the four foot deep. Wow, that's so beautiful. Okay, now let's go on. We've teased everybody with this, with the promotion. But um, let's let's talk a little bit about the soul of Arkansas. Now, what um, can you tell me a little bit about your um, idea or where this this uh, whole series of paintings came from? Once again, you know, I so appreciate my family, my wife. I mean, we've been living here for years. We think of uh, we almost know. Lots of people in the hot springs, you know, not only hot springs, in the surrounding area. You know, we, we can name all the people. And uh, my wife said, why would we just do some paintings to, to represent them, to record them in a different way? So that's why you see my painting is a little bit different than the rest of the artist because my background is a sculptor. And I love the people. Beside the landscape, you know, also I love different kind of peoples, and this why every spring or fall we always drive the car around the state. We go to a very small town. We go to like a, the town only have like a, you know, four hundred people like that, 
or we go to very royal area or as far as like a, I even can name the name yet anymore. I mean, it's so, so primitive area. People still, you know, have the goats, they have the chicken to raise to make a living on like that. So I feel these people is a really true people. It's not the people you see on the movie, not the people I see in the magazines because they are multiplied. And these are people so truly people I talk to then uh, meet then uh, you know buy stuff from them every day. So this is why I work on these pictures for four years. This is all the show. Thank by the way, thanks to you and Steve gave us the opportunity to show in the in the commission the first. Then um, Barbara also taking me my work to the 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 West of Memphis too, we show over there. Then we now finally we have opportunity to show in the historical museum, which is a perf perfect place to show the work because this Arkansas is a historical, it's the people, you know, this are so fortunate to have that. And now when you created these, did you did you paint these thinking, oh, this gentleman's family will want to buy this painting or I can sell this and make a lot of money from it? No. This, we, we talk about the beginning with, I say, this depending, we spent for four years, never can sell because people want to, you do the portraits, okay? Most time they want to modify. They want to make a little bit pretty, a little bit young, you know, a little bit different than themselves. But this is almost truly what they are. I mean, even a little bit exaggerated on it because, and, uh, all things you see, like this wood carving pieces, this old man, you know. Tell the truth, it's a funny story. I was go to the Maada in the art center over there. I saw the piece carving, it's very nice. Very because I'm the scale of this wood carving, you know. This carving is so different than I am. They're very primitive, but it looks so good. We bought a couple and I talked to the the lady over there, Barbara. I said, Barbara, who? Who I can see this guy. I want to meet him. He said, "Well, he living not too far away. He's, you know, we, we can we can arrange on this." So he make a phone call. We special meet this guy in person, and then we walk in. He look at me. He's kind of, "What well, you come here for?" You know what I mean? I tell him who I am. I love his work, and but I saw the person. I said, "Oh, wait a minute." So I told my wife in Chinese. He don't understand. He said, "Oh, this this." Just that once not really, I'm um, thinking about the work coming people, you know. And uh, we, we just have short video on leaving. I said, forget, man. <laughs> That's the, the image doesn't match my idea. So we drive uh -huh. back. We drive back and not, because the guy looked like a professor, you know, in the in the school. Does it doesn't look like a work coming to me? And the, the way he dressed, the, you know, everything totally different. Also, he unwilled you to his kind of have a heart attack, a para, you know. So um, on the way we drive back, we stop on the one of kind of very primitive, like a gift shop. We come in and saw a lady talk with his brother. And the guy sit on the chair, the, the, the chair like this, a rocking chair over there. I saw him, I said, man, this guy should be look like a wood coming to me, you know. <laughs> So I ask him what you do in your life. You know, he love he loves some art. He does a little bit carving too, but it's not really work carving. And he's a retired professor in the college. And I say, you know, I talk to him and I say he's the ones in my mind it should be work carving. So I ask him to take pictures, you know. Also, he you can see his face. He have he's really American Arkansas people. He's you can see it, it's have the American Indian with the Caucasian, you know, mixed it. And by the way, this paintings, all the surrounding image is nothing in the photograph except the back window it is. And uh, the pottery, the vice, the carvings are all front of my studio. Okay. So and also, kind of you see the pottery, have a pottery, it's an actual drawing pottery, but have my name on it. And his hat, I put in Arkansas too, you know, I design everything except his, his uh, bruising and his, his clothes look like him, you know. Well, speaking as an Arkansas native, 
Um, I know lots of people who look so like this. This remind this painting, whenever I see it, it always reminds me so much of my dad. My wow. dad overalls, overalls like that, comfortable, practical black shoes like that, a plaid shirt and a baseball cap. Um, so it's it's just I mean, it, truly the soul of Arkansas or the um, this this man is Arkansas. <laughs> Yeah, look at his hand. I mean, he's a working hand. You can see it. I'm putting lots of tension under his hand, you know? Yes, you can tell. It's just beautiful. This is one of my favorite pieces from the collection. Thanks. And um, yeah, and, and I'll tell everybody a little bit of, more about where they can go see it to the Historic Arkansas Museum. When I went there for the exhibit, it was the first time I had been there. So uh, it's a they have a wonderful exhibit space. Um, and then this little fella on the left here, um, he looks a little bit familiar. <laughs> you know, I tell you things, every painting you see is my work, it's my love, okay? It's my child. So this little fella is my grandkids. Time we yeah. take it, he go to, you know, the zoo, he loved the animals. You can see his motion, he, he like it, he kind of scared too, you know? And uh -huh. he had a relation with the, the, the sheep. The sheep are kind of trying to kiss him. He kind of scared, you know, his uh -huh. whole body. <laughs> his body is kind of want to go and then run back. He kind of, you know, it's a very nice uh -huh. way. A little tension there. Well, in these two pieces, I mean, they're both, um, you know, Arkansas now is not just the old fella in the overalls anymore. The next generation and future generations, um, you know, we are, we're like the rest of the United States. We are a melting pot and all of us who live here, it's just wonderful that you found this way to represent um, some of the diversity in our state. Okay, let's, oh, these are awesome. Yeah, th this is a couple of my favorite pieces also. The one in the left is we go to, my kids all love flowers you know my wife you can see far away in the corner it's my wife to go check out and uh, this in a small town it's in a melvin the city of melvin they have farmers market also they have master gardens they sell all this stuff so i go over there i don't buy anything but i use my camera i did a lot of different photograph even i have a very long lens to to share the pictures, I still somebody catch my, catch, you know, I, what I'm working on. You see that under the right, left of the girl? Uh -huh. She's looking at me. <laughs> but I use her as a drawing in the pictures point. Looks, it looks nice. I like that piece, you know. I do too, because you, she does. She looks like she caught you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then the farmer's market there. Oh, the yeah, this piece is also, I love this piece. We go to this place with a Tom <clears throat> several times. I mean, I love this place. They sell everything. They sell chickens, you know, dogs, so all kinds of things, <laughs> eggs. And I'm going to go back up here a couple of slides and give so everybody can see kind of the gallery space that's there and the images that are um, that are in the gallery. Okay, and we'll go back down to here. Okay, here we are. This, now tell us a little bit about this and what this means to you. Okay, you know, my wife very loved the people, love people. I mean, she, she put so much parties in the home and this, all the people on this pictures is all my guests. But it's not in the same times, so, but I put together, you know, make a big uh, Christmas parties. And uh, you, you can recognize lots of friends, like uh, artists, friends, or doctors, or business people, pottery, you know, and all different nationality too. And uh, I'm just enjoy to do this. Well, it's beautiful. And your wife was the most amazing host and so hospitable. And those parties, the uh, Christmas parties were such fun. 
Thanks. Yeah, she loved people anyway. Well, she was such a lovely, lovely person. Um, um, the okay, this is okay. Tell us about this little lady. I remember meeting her. Oh, she is fine lady. I mean, we just like I told you before, we always travel different places. Sometimes we stop at collectible things because I love the old things because this is a brown to the cultural, brown to the past, you know. So we stopped at this place. We saw the all different things. We love that. We pick up a few pieces. We talk to her as about, I say, I love you collector, you know. I love your things. And also I love your image. You have such colorful, you know, dress. You say, really? I say, yeah. I say, if you don't mind, I'm the painter. I love to take a picture of you. You say, what you do with it? I said, do with my art. He said, okay, I want to see sometime. I said, all right. So I I did this paintings with a photograph of her while she she talked with me. And the only one thing is really brought to her is a desk with all the sewing machine in the back and a cup of drink. And uh, once again, I add all the things I love to put it on the windows, on the back shelf, you know. So this this these things are called names like a collector, you know. She 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 is so wonderful. I mean. Oh yeah. Now was the sonic cup there in the picture? Yeah, this this is her drink in the day. <laughs> this is the day she was drink. <laughs> well, and I remember when because this the Soul of Arkansas exhibit, as Long Law mentioned, it opened in the convention center and it hung in the convention center for several months um in 2018 or 19 18, yes, and so this amazing collection of paintings um, was there for just the people who visited the convention center and so when um the opening night of it when um, we celebrated um the new exhibit going up um this delightful young woman or this this did not a delightful woman drove over. Is she from Mount Ida? Is that right? Yeah. No, she's from yeah. Glenwood. Oh, Glenwood, Glenwood, Glenwood. Yeah. I used to, it was somewhere right outside of Hot Springs. Mm -hmm. um, and and now, how many pieces from that Soul of Arkansas exhibit are on exhibit right now at the Historic Arkansas Museum? They they take us twenty pieces, but in the upper they display sixteen. Because the the they want to make sure it look like a museum display. They don't want to cry down it, so they leave four piece behind it. Okay, so those sixteen pieces can be seen at the historic Arkansas Museum, um, downtown Little Rock on Third Street. And now, how long will that exhibit be hanging? There will be. Let me see. Like a, roughly like four more months. Oh, excellent. Okay. There, is it through October, the end of October? Yeah, October 16th. And the second Friday, you know, I've, I've talked a lot about our gallery walk here in Hot Springs. Well, theirs is, from when I've been there, a little bit smaller and not, not quite as old, but they do have a art walk in Little Rock. It's on the second Friday of each month. And so Friday, July 8th, so just in a couple of days, um, the Historic Arkansas Museum will be open late and have entertainment. And you can go check out the artwork of Long Wash U, the soul of Arkansas. And also another Hot Springs artist, Anne Greenwood, um, her, her artwork is exhibited up on the second um, level of the um, exhibit space there at His Ar Historic Arkansas Museum. So, um, but the, they just, they did such a beautiful job in hanging, hanging your artwork um now is there anything that well before we go on i'm going to do one last plug and then we'll i'll take the projection down um just a reminder hot springs gallery walk will celebrate 30 33 years on friday august 15th so everybody mark it on your calendar i'll be back the first wednesday of um august on um, august 3rd um, with my guest um, who will be talking about what else happening on gallery walk but it will be um, an artist who was it was an artist in residence at the hot springs national park her she's a hot, hot springs artist jerry hillis so she'll be joining me on um, the next gallery walk talk on wednesday august 3rd but gallery walk will be the fifth so 
Um, okay, I am going to exit out of my slides here. And Paul, whoops, stop sharing. There we go. There's always a technical glitch in there somewhere. So is there anything I did not ask you about Longwa that you would like to share, share with us? Well, um, once again, I appreciate all the people living in Arkansas and, uh, you know, hot springs that have helped us in the past. They open arm to, to, you know, working as strange people from the other side of the world. And uh, I appreciate it. So this is why we, my wife and my family, we, we trying to repay back to the society. This is why we spend a lot of time to try to create some art for local artists, you know, for the local cities to make uh, things, make city hot springs will be, you know, really good art of town. Not only just a name, it'll be really solid, you know. Um, is there anything you wish that people, the general public knew about artists that we don't know, whether you or anybody you know, else? You, you did a great job anyway. <laughs> you know, you, you, you introduce the people like this, lets people deeply to know what people thinking, what design, what art mean is. Once again, I want to share with the people is, look at the piece of art. Don't look at just the scale, technique way. Don't look at the style. Look, it's move you. If they move you, it's good art. Because to me, every art is like a my child. I get a move from the people, I get a move from the things happen, and I create it. Then just like a, the art, I want to say, is like a piece, like a bottle of wine. They come from the grips, but it's much stronger than grips. It was more tasteful, more concentrated. The art, the same thing. And every piece of art I create from a person, it's not just photograph. I will enhance it. I will be more concentrated. I will make it exactly even more look like him or her, you know. You capture the soul of it. Yes, it is. You cannot see it, but you can feel it. Right. Yeah, you feel it in your soul when you when it's when it moves you. Um, yes. Okay, so if someone you know, everyone can see your public art here or the exhibit at um, Historic Arkansas Museum. What if someone wanted to see pieces of your work or um, uh, wanted to purchase art? Well, uh, well, you know, they, they, they have Facebook, they can contact me or they have my phone number, can call me, you know. But normally I doesn't do much commission work anymore. I try to spend a lot more time to create a, what I want to do for for the for the family or for the society or for you know because to me every time commission they always add somebody want it. It's not you wanted to do. And uh, you know if people love my work they want to pay the price it'll be good. But they ask me to do something they want to just find somebody else. Yeah. And now your um, your son and daughter-in-law are doctors here in Hot Springs, and they have two uh, children. So now, is there a future artist um, to carry on the shoe tradition? Yeah, I think so. My my grandkids, you know, he have show with me a couple of years ago in the Mid American Museum. Is uh, the crayons of the canvas? He he actually is a wonderful artist. I think he. In the future, we're well, much better than I am, and uh, you know, we look well, for he's very fortunate that that he gets to learn from you. He certainly well, has an advantage. It's different things it. now. My son, my daughter, they are all good artists, but they're smart enough to don't do the art because you know the artist that's a very rough life. And uh, fortunately, my grandkids they don't have to worry about the money. Uh, hopefully, they can do what they want to do and to do to for the for the society for themselves not only for the money you know oh, thank you so much longwa thank you we're so glad you found your way to hot springs and that i always admire your artwork and admire you as a human being and all that you've done for your family 
in our community and just thank you so much for for sharing your skills and your passion and your um, um, talent with us. Um, it's really, um, I could just get tell you how much I admire you and thank you for, for being with us this evening. Um, and I can, I, I take questions if there are any questions from the, the those watching along on Facebook. Uh, let's see. Well, Dee Dee uh, says, Is thank Paul you. There? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, we'll take just a second. Now, you have a website. Um, am I correct? Is it xu-longhua, L-O-N-G-H-U-A dot com? If you want to see some other yes. pieces I mean, of this you can artwork. Go the website or more, um, yes. on Facebook, um, Longhua Shu um, is his Facebook page. Yes. Yes, uh -huh. that can and go. There's go Paul. You can hear me okay? Hello? Hello? Von Wa, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. All right. Hi. Uh, um, Dee Dee says thank you and wonderful Wait. interview. Seems Thanks. like there might be some kind of delay. Uh, not sure who's in that's on. We're, is there a delay when I'm talking? Anyway, I just want to use this opportunity to thank all the friends, all the people living in Hot Springs and Arkansas to support my work. And we so happy to live in here. We find the uh, Hot Springs our home. We can hear yeah. you okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Anyway, if you want to ask a question, they always can ask a letter. Yes, if we there's a bit of a delay. I was trying to put it on Facebook, you know. I don't want to be too long, then people are boring and say, we don't want to see it anymore. <laughs> it's always over an hour. <laughs> How about now? Is that coming through live? Yes, I can hear you. Lon, well, how about you? Can you hear me live right when I'm talking or is there a delay? I can hear you now. Okay. It might I'm not sure if it's on my end or Mary's. Yeah, the, I cannot see the picture. Sometimes it can't delay a little bit. The image. Okay. Well, um, since we're having difficulties, um, where can anybody uh, contact you or, or reach out to you if they have questions or, or would like to, to hear more, learn more? Yeah, they, they can they can Facebook on me or they can message me or they can call me. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, um, I thank you very much for your time. This was this was a wonderful interview uh, and I hope everybody enjoyed learning a lot about your work and and every all the hard work that goes into your work. Uh, so uh, the Gallery Walk Talk series is the first Wednesday of every month uh, featuring Mary. And I guess we've lost her. We have I don't know who's in the issues we're on, but um, you can go back and watch all of the previous episodes in this series. And if you tuned in late to this one or you just want to share um, share Lanois work here, please share that this uh, will be available on Facebook and YouTube. Hey, Mary. Hey, I'm back. I don't know what happened. I was I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it was you or me, but um, yeah, I was just saying goodbye to everyone, but uh, I'm glad you're back. Uh, do you have any final words you'd like to share? Nope. Thank, just thank you so much to both of you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Longwa. And Thanks. to everyone who's joined us and, and um, hung out with us through the little technical glitch there at the end. Thanks for your patience. We, we almost made it through perfectly, but okay. it was bound to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you, both of you, and thank you, everyone, for watching. All right. Thanks.